Welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. If you were here last week, we talked about blogging, still a thing, or wait a minute, wait, last week, podcasting. Yeah, last week was podcasting. This week, we're going to talk about marketing and how to target your ideal client. And next week, we're going to talk about hashtags. There have been a lot of questions about hashtags because Instagram is changing the rules again. So, you know, first they're saying that you can only use three. Then they said you could use 15 and then they said 30. And now we're back to three. So we're going to talk about that next week. We're going to talk about using hashtags on all the platforms, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, And do you really need to do it? And will it benefit you and how many and that kind of thing? So we will do that next week. This week, let's talk about targeting your ideal client. Okay, so what is your, and let's just jump into it. So what is what is your target client? What's your ideal client? Well, it's a specific group of people that you want to reach with your message or product. That's it. The better you define it, the easier they are to reach. And I've heard, I've heard multiple pushbacks on this. The biggest is I don't want to define my audience so specifically that I omit business with another client. You're going to get overflow and overflow is fine, but you can't get to the overflow unless you actually have the target to begin with. And I've I've said this many times, you know, it matters. You cannot be all things to all people. You, it, you can't, good marketing repels as much as it attracts. You don't want to attract a less than ideal client. And you know, as a small business owner, when you work with someone that's not a good fit for you, it's painful for them and it is painful for you. We've all had that where we accepted a client and we knew we shouldn't have done it. And then every time the phone rings or you get an email, you're filled with dread because it's just not a good fit. You waste time, energy, money, chasing the wrong audience. So ideally you want to have that specific target in mind. Yeah, there's going to be overflow. There's going to be word of mouth referral and that's great. You can still get business from um, from different groups, from a different target audience, but you have to start somewhere. So let's go ahead and talk about how do you identify them? How do you know who's best? Well, one of the first things you want to do if you've been in business for more than a year, look at your existing customer base especially look at your Google Analytics. It will tell you kind of where people are coming from and how they're getting to you. And it will help you identify who you're dealing with now. But most businesses, there's a commonality in their client base. You, it, Whether it's, and we're going to talk about what the demographics include, but there's common ground there. So you want to go through and take a deep dive, a deep look at your current client base, especially the clients that you love. If you have one client, we have one client who I love. We've been working with them for eight years. It may be my you know, favorite. I love, love them. They're great to work with. I would so seriously love to duplicate him. Love to. So that I know would lend toward my target client when I'm examining who my best target is, who my ideal target is. Number two, you want to, I just, you have to identify your customer's pain points. What keeps them up at night? What keeps your clients up at night? What are they worried about? Most of the time, our clients, we, when we work with a small business, their big pain points are social media changes so quickly. They're afraid they're going to miss something or they can't keep up. They have FOMO. They're afraid of missing out on a specific platform. Or it's so technical, they don't understand the ins and outs and they get so busy, they can't keep up. So what is their, you know, what are their pain points? They don't have time or the energy to do what needs to be done. Those are huge pain points for our small business clients. What are your pain points for your small business clients? Okay, number three, you want to look at the demographics. What is the demographic? Age, gender, education, social class, marital status, location, and buying behavior. Are they married? Do they have a college degree? Are they divorced? Do they live in Hoover? Do they live in Trustville? What are their buying behaviors? Do they have a Costco membership? Do they purchase online? These are important pieces of information to know. Um, the the other the next thing, fourth thing you want to look at are when you're examining the details, you want to look at actions and activity. You want to look at their personal characteristics, lifestyle, interests and hobbies, social engagements and online behavior and vocation. If you are targeting for a second home, you probably wouldn't target a 
newly married couple. It wouldn't be a good fit. If you were targeting luxury homes, you wouldn't target a newly married couple that has less than a specific income. And you also have to target based on location. It's probable that your audience who lives in a rural Alabama town is not going to be shopping for a $2 million home. That's why it's important to know kind of their engagements online. And you do have the opportunity, uh, a lot of times in Facebook ads, you can kind of look and see it breaks it down into categories. So if it's something you're not familiar with, you can log into meta ads and pull up their, uh, their categories. So you can kind of see do your, what are their characteristics, lifestyle? Do they hike? Are they outdoorsy? Do they play video games online? What are their interests and hobbies? Do they own a pet? So if you're going to be a pet sitter, your clients better own a pet. That's something you need to know. And then you can take it to the next level. It, are you going to be walking a cat? Probably not. Needs to be a dog owner. Where do they get their pet supplies? I mean, that's that's how you get specific. That's how you niche it down. Okay, number five, you really need to listen. Research is a big part of targeting your client and knowing who's going to be the best fit for you. You want to survey your existing clients. And I don't mean engage them for two hours. I mean, very quick, three questions. What's your um, favorite thing about the services we provide? Why do you use the services we provide and what would you like for us to improve? Simple. Doesn't have to be a huge deep dive. Just get some feedback so you know if you're heading in the right direction. The next thing is going to be social listening. And social listening encompasses a multitude of things. I would say Google Alerts is a great way to keep up with what's going on in your industry. Checking on Facebook. And when you when I say check on Facebook, I mean check tags, mentions, and check your search bar. If I go to the search bar on Google and I look for challenges for small business marketing, I'm going to get a very different result if I put that same information in the search bar on Facebook. You just get different information there. Check the tags and mentions of your company. So you can see a lot of times people on Facebook, if there's a question they think you can answer, they will tag you or your company. And unless you're checking for those, you might miss something. What a great way to find out what people think you do and how to move forward by offering that service so that it, it might be a great fit for your next client. Twitter is a great listening platform. There's a lot of activity there and you can search by keyword. And if you want to pull out the big guns, there is a program called Mention. There's a free version. It, it goes up It goes up to over $100, but for um, small business, it's $41 a month. It enables brands and agencies to monitor the web and listen to their audience and manage their social media. Basically, it listens across all platforms. It's not like setting up a hashtag on Instagram where it has to match the hashtag or it doesn't pull up. It will pick your company name or your industry or your specific pain point that you're looking for. You can tell it what you want it to go search for, and it'll look in blogs, social media, websites. It searches across the entire web. So if you're really interested in getting information and searching, that's a great way to do it. The, um, the next way to identify your target audience, number six, is to look at the competition. Now, Facebook has suggested competitors built in, people who they think you compete with. That is not always accurate. That's Facebook's version of who you compete with. And I don't want you to get hung up on this. We talked about imposter syndrome recently, and I've been doing this a long time. But if I start looking at my competition deeply, I start getting that FOMO. Oh, am I not doing this right? Am I not doing that right? Well, they're doing this. Should we be doing that? You don't want to torture yourself like that. Look at your competition to find out more about their target client to help you establish your own target client. Um, I'm not saying copy. I'm saying get inspiration there. But definitely take some time to check it out. But don't get so, uh, don't deep dive so far that you drown. And number seven, you want to list the benefits of your product and service. Um, okay, well, so what does that mean? Well, features are what your product is or does and benefits are the results so we can manage your social media but the result is you have time to go make more sales that's that's the benefit how does that product make or service make someone's life easier or better or just more interesting what are you doing to relieve their pain points well um i've been that small business owner where it's 2 p.m and you're like oh no i haven't posted anything on facebook today it's it can be unsettling, especially if you're on multiple platforms. You get so busy in your business, you can't work on your business. So that's a tremendous benefit of what we offer. It, it helps 
with time, it helps with energy, and it helps with stress. You have to figure out what your features versus your benefits are. Okay, number eight, you want to create your target client statement. So once you have all this information and you've done all your research, then you want to actually make a statement that compiles all that information. Like, for example, if you're a realtor and you specialize in homes on the lake, your target statement might be, I work with older, retired, married couples who want to invest in a second home near the water. That's real specific. The more specific, again, the easier it is to target your client overall. So once you do all the research and you have taken a look at your existing clients and you understand the benefits of what you offer, then you make your statement. So for us, our statement would be, we work with business owners in their, between their thirties and sixties who are, for us, it's, we're predominantly female. So female business owners from 35 to 60 who need help with their business to save them time because they're doing it all by themselves. That's part of our target statement. So that's kind of how you pull it all together. Um, Next week, that's it for us today. Next week, we're going to talk about hashtags. I really want to deep dive hashtags because again, I think they're very confusing and I think Instagram has made it confusing on purpose. So let's find out what's really working and let's find out um, how you could put that to work for your business. If you guys have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. You can always send us a direct message. We're happy to answer your questions. And until next week, I'm Karen Taradis with Social you and I'm here to help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for the Social University podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.